Okay, hi everybody, I'm Ryan Albrecht. Uh, I'm here to represent the Emerging Technologies team, and I wanna do a demo of Session Replay today. Um, I'm actually a little bit new to Century. Before this, I was at Facebook and then later Pinterest, so I've got a lot of experience writing bugs, and Session Replay is, I think, the tool that I would have always loved to have to help me fix them a little bit faster. So let's do the demo. Oh, so before we do the demo, I wanna show you my app that we're gonna be debugging today. It's a Pokedex app. It's got some pretty basic features right now, but I keep adding more and more, and so it's getting better every day. Uh, so far, the core features that it has is you can scroll through a list of all the Pokemon that have ever existed. Uh, if you find one you like, you can click through, you can see the stats and the moves that it has, and then give it a try to catch it. Oh, internet might be broken. My internet's not working. Let's try the Wi-Fi. Live demos, guys. Okay, I knew I was gonna be the only one. NPM run serve. There we go, okay, it does work. Um, yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you. Uh, be here all day. Um, this is the app, I guess it's mostly offline only, except for this page. Uh, but when you find a Pokemon you like, anyway, you can try to catch it. Now we'll see if this works. Oh my god, I've been practicing all morning. Just, yes, okay. Um, and then you can give it a fun name, Butterfree, Butterfly, Fry, whatever. And so you can build up your list of Pokemon. So I've got a couple right now, it's, it's going well. But like I said, early days. Uh, like any massively successful and massively working all the time product, there are some bugs. Uh, and Sentry has alerted me to one already. Uh, so this bug is saying, cannot read properties of undefined. It's trying to read map. This is a, a usual bug I get all the time in JavaScript. I should learn how not to get it. Um, but what it means is that it's trying to access the property called map on an object. I expected it to be an array, but it's actually undefined. Uh, so this, let's see what Sentry here can tell us. Uh, we've got the stack trace. This is always very helpful. Uh, we can see here this props my Pokemon list dot map. So obviously we're expecting a list. It should either be empty or have some Pokemon in it. I had three Pokemon. Uh, whoever this user was, they probably had zero or some. It shouldn't have been undefined. Uh, the problem with the snapshots is this is just like a snapshot in time, or the stack trace is a snapshot in time. And in this case, there's only two frames. We've got the code that failed, and it looks like this is the Sentry instrumentation. It's actually not my application code. So just by looking at this, I don't actually know where that undefined came from. And I could go in, I could add an if statement or check to make sure if it's undefined and set a default or whatever. But the real source of the problem is somewhere else. It should never have been undefined to begin with. So this stack trace is not very helpful. Luckily, though, we do have breadcrumbs. And the breadcrumbs are, are better than the stack trace because they're giving you information about what led into this error. So we, we can have up to 100 breadcrumbs here uh, and try to pick through what was relevant. So let's see. Here's our error at the bottom that we know about. Uh, the last thing the user did was they tried to save a Pokemon and it looks like they were trying to save undefined, so that's wrong. This should have been something. Uh, we can see the button clicks here from when they threw the ball. Uh, here's the throw, you know, they, obviously it worked. They had the, the random numbers were in their favor. Uh, and if we g even go further back, we can see here that they had Pokemon to begin with. There's about six in this list. I don't know what they are, uh, but it's important that there was something there. And now it's undefined. Uh, so normally if I had this kind of error, I would just kind of be at a loss. It's a, a mystery how I could reproduce this. What, where should I go to fix it? There could be other places that are reading undefined, other errors in my app. They're related, but I, I can't see them. So this is where session replay can, comes into play. You can find links to it all over Sentry. We're adding more integrations every day, but when I'm looking at an error page, I love to just scroll down and I can see the preview right here. But let's click through. So session replay, is taking a snapshot of the DOM for any JavaScript or web-based application. It doesn't matter if it's React or anything else. Uh, 
and recreating a video-like experience so you can see what the user was doing leading into an error and after the error happened. So you're going to see the reproduction steps that you need to follow in order to recreate the error, but you can also see what the, error, what the user saw after the error happened, and you can use that to tell you, like, was this a significant error? Did it get handled automatically? Or was the user, like, totally screwed? And maybe they had the blue screen of death or something. So this is what, this is what the replay page looks like. Um, I'm going to give you a little tour, and then we're going to debug this thing. So starting at the top, we've got our timeline. This is where we've taken the existing breadcrumbs that everybody's used and loved, and we've blown it out so that every event that happened is now placed relative to the other events. So it's breadcrumbs over time. This gives you a sense of like what kind of activity was the user doing and when was it. Um, maybe if you scroll back in the breadcrumbs, you know, you're going way back early into the video, and it's not really relevant. So this shows you where the clusters of activity were and what was really relevant. Of course, we've got the replay itself, the video, which you can zoom into and play in full screen. Uh, below that, we've got our normal breadcrumb list, which gives you sort of a sense of familiarity, I think. Uh, and that scrolls along as the video plays. You can keep your place uh, and know what the user is doing in a textual way. And then, of course, the main part of the screen is the console. Um, we've got a bunch of other tools as well, which we can get into a little bit today. Um, but this is really taking the browser dev tools and putting it remotely on your desktop so you can debug things. Uh, so let's try to debug this thing. So because we came from an issue, the video is actually already scrolled to right where that error happened. So I'm, it's a five minute replay. We're not going to watch the whole thing. And I'm at about the four minute mark. Uh, so let's just play it and see what happens. Was this a serious issue or not? So there, I'm going to stop it. Oops, wrong button again. Let's jump back a little bit and stop it at the right spot. There. So the user was trying to catch this Mew Pokemon. It's not Mew 2, so it's not that good. But uh, it, it's going to evolve. It's great. And so when we play it, we're going to see what happened. It looked like the catch was successful. They're back at the list. They're looking for another Pokemon. So I actually might be thinking, oh, up until this point, I was actually thinking, this might not be a serious error, because they were able to make the catch, navigate around a little bit, but whatever they just clicked on, it's a white screen. This is like the white screen of death. It's very bad. So if I, without having session replay, I would have never known the significance of this error and how it affects our users. So knowing this, I, I know that this is a real serious bug that we're going to fix. Let's jump back to when the error was. So we can see the error here in their timeline, and we can jump back to it. So the error itself was reading property undefined of map. I think the way that I would try to debug this, well, we know that they had Pokemon at one point, right? And now it's undefined. So maybe if we use the video, we can go back in time to when the, when the app was working, when they had Pokemon on the screen, and see what happened from then until now. So how do we find that moment in time? Well, I'm going to go to the Network tab. And this is just like in the browser dev tools. Uh, all of the network requests that were made. So you can see image loads, JavaScript, CSS, and for our purposes now, navigations. So I know that this page is called the My Pokemon List. So all I have to type is My. And this is divided by things that have already happened and things that are about to happen. So because we're looking at the error right now, all I have to do is scroll up and find the most previous or the most recent time that the user was at this page which happened here about 30 seconds before the error. I can click to it. The timeline is going to jump back in time, and we can see here what the user was doing when this worked. So let's watch it again. So it's that same Mew Pokemon, actually. That's, that's fun. Let's play it. Oh, OK, I'm just going to pause it right away. So here they are on the page. Page loaded. Worked fine. Uh, all their Pokemon are here. We've got the six Pokemon Bulbous. Oops, sorry about that. Got the six Pokemon, Bulbasaur, Pikachu, obviously, most, fa uh, most popular on the panel. Uh, Charmander, Squirtle, the famous ones. Mew and Mewtwo is here. Uh, so they already have a Mew. That's, that's fun. Let's see what happened from now until the end. So they have their Mew. They're checking it out. They're on the list page, doing a search. And they found Mew again. So this is the problem, actually. The search, probably working fine. Uh, but when you search for a Pokemon that you already own, you should see your own Pokemon, right? It's like, I have a Mew, I have a Pikachu, that's who I want right now. 
They've got funny names. They've got, you know, butterfly, whatever. Uh, so just using my product knowledge here, this is not supposed to be the catch button. This is supposed to be the release button. I want to see my existing Pokemon. Oh, stop doing that. Uh, so let's keep going and just see what's happening here. So he's doing the catch. He's caught it again. He's given a cool name. I'm going to stop it here. One of the things that is really important to Session Replay and that we're working really hard to make sure is automatic and easy for everybody is taking care of PII and private information for people. Uh, so you can see here in this text box that whatever the, the name is that this user has typed in, it's being masked. And this is happening all on the, on the browser side. So no data is going to get sent. Whatever they've typed in is not going to get sent to Sentry. Uh, so if you have a bank or if you have a social network or anything where there's you know, private chats or anything like that, you can mask it all out on the browser uh, and keep your user's data safe. Uh, so let's keep watching. So it looks like this catch was successful. And we're past the point in time. This is a, the 4 minute and 15 second mark. We're past the point in time when the error happened. So the error happened silently, which is kind of good. But we know that if we keep watching this video, the error is actually going to seriously impact the user, and they're going to not be able to, fix, uh, to use the site anymore. So that's really what session replay is. We've always had bugs, and we've always been able to go in and put those try catch statements or those if statements in there. But by looking at the whole session and the whole journey that the user's taking, we're able to see the, the reproduction steps that the user, um, the steps that the user actually took, but also what the impact of that bug was. Uh, it's a session-wide view that reduces uh, guessing and lets you fix your bugs sooner. And so I hope everybody gets excited about session replay, and you can find out about it uh, by going to sentry.io/slash/four session replay. Or, finding, or asking questions on the Discord.